Welcome back to A Posteriori's Line Following with Gears. In the last module, we described how to create a scaffolding for gamification of line following. That means we can now grade and see how well each algorithm that we create is doing. And now we can create new versions of our algorithm to try to improve on our line follower. And by improve, I just mean to get faster from point A to point B. Of course, you want to continue making your robots robust in the sense that they should never lose the line. But you can now work on improving the time and efficiency of your robot and getting from the beginning to the end of the line. And so now let's remove this algorithm from our while loop. We can create another if statement and place it back in here and keep interchanging. But now it's time for me to introduce you to functions so that we can easily modularize the code and interchange different algorithms that we create inside our gaming scaffolding. This algorithm represents the two-state line follower. I will create a function that wraps this, and I will call it the two-state algorithm. The function blocks can be found under the functions tab. We have two different types of functions, one that returns a value and one that is more of a pure procedure call. I will wrap my algorithm inside this procedural function and I will call it the two-state algorithm. Okay, And once I've named it, I, if I go back to the functions menu, I can see that there is a new two-state algorithm block. This is my function call. Every time I go inside my game iteration, I can simply call my two-state algorithm function and it will simply execute the two-state algorithm defined inside. So we shouldn't expect to see any difference in the behavior now in our robot. I just want to make sure that function calls work and that modularization can be used in this way. Go back to the simulator and start our robot. Let's make sure that our time is pretty much the same. We expected 37 seconds. We got 37 seconds, just like before. So we know that uh, this now works, and we can use the same process to try to create new algorithms that work even better. In a three-state algorithm, we still have these two states, where we're too far near the line or too far away from the line. But there would be a third state, which is roughly in the middle on the edge of the line where we're trying to follow. So if we use 50 uh, as our middle spot on the edge of where the line uh, is, then we can use a zone maybe around that edge, somewhere between light intensity uh, at 40% to maybe 60%. And that zone we can use as our you know, sweet spot, the middle, the middle area, uh, where we're in that zone, we know that we're pretty much where we want to be on the line. Our sensor is pretty much where it want, we, we want it to be on the line. And we can just go straight when we're in that area. So that will be an, a new state, a new condition that we need to add. So we could just duplicate this function for beginning, for starters. And we can rename it to a three-state algorithm. Uh, notice when you copy, it adds a 2 at the end, just to show that it's a, a copy of the, the first. You can't have the duplicate function name. And now we'll have a, a, a new function call, a three-state algorithm function. But just because we named it so, doesn't make it a three-state algorithm. We actually have to change the code inside. Okay, so how do we do that? We'll, uh, we'll add an else if inside here to indicate the third state that we want to uh, account for. We simply do that by clicking on the gear and adding an else if into our if structure, into our conditional structure. And we close this box by clicking on the gear again. So now that we have the structure in place, we want to add a new condition for uh, being in the middle. So let's say 40 to 60 is what we agree on to be the middle zone. Uh, we can say instead of greater than 50, we can change this to being greater than 60. And anything over 60 should behave the pretty much the same way as before. We want to move back uh, a hard uh, left or right 
back towards the line depending on which side of the line you're tracking and uh, anything below 40 we want to do the same thing we did before which was to track back towards the line and we can now add anything uh, greater than 40 here since we this is a conditional that uh, is sequential first it checks if anything is greater than 60 we can assume that uh, if we pass this if statement and went on to this else if that the reflected intensity was not greater than 60 so it must be less than 60 so we can check if anything is greater than 40 and that would mean any light intensity return value that would be greater than 40 but less than 60. Um, by doing this sequ in sequential order starting from uh, using a greater than sign and starting from the largest number uh, in our condition to the lowest uh, we can avoid having to use uh, complicated uh, boolean conditions like the reflected light intensity is um, less than 60 and greater than 40. We can avoid those types of statements by just keeping it in this structure. Um, so anything greater than 40 now means it's in the middle and so we'd want to move in a straight line. Okay, and simply uh, doing this we can uh, see if what kind of effect this would have on our algorithm. So we can test by just replacing the function call from two state to three state. And go back to our simulator, reset, and start again. We are saving our time from before so we can compare the three state algorithm to the two state algorithm. Okay, and the time we report back. Okay, and we can click on this uh, button here to expand the console view so we can see the two times. And we can see a marked difference, almost uh, uh, an 11 second difference between the first two state algorithm run and the new three state algorithm run. And that's a significant difference. That's simply just from changing uh, the, the algorithm to add a new state that allows it to drive faster by considering the middle area where we know it's, it's somewhere along the edge of the line where, where we want to be uh, and, and avoiding going uh, left, right, left, right and edging our way in and just drive straight. Now we can continue to play with um, the values on, in this algorithm and try to improve on it even more to see how fast we can get the three-state algorithm to work. There's just one uh, optimization that I would consider making at this point. Um, to It won't necessarily improve the three-state algorithm's runtime, but at least it would make this code a little bit less clunky and in general the, the structure of the algorithm uh, more efficient. And that is every time we enter in the while loop, an iteration for this algorithm, we really don't need to ask the color sensor to do work more than once. We should only get one reflected light intensity and use that to make a decision. And the way that I've created the, the structure, we're actually going back to the color sensor two times if it's not greater than 60. So if it is greater than 60, it's only going to ask the color sensor for one reading but if the value came back as less than 60, we're going to go back to the color sensor and repeat the uh, reading. Uh, it, you know, it's, it doesn't, it maybe doesn't feel complex to you or it doesn't take a long time for, for uh, the electronics to come back or in this case, the virtual um, electronics to come back. But it does add some unnecessary complexity in the algorithm and on, and on the behavior of the robot. So we can avoid this by adding some code complexity to reduce the, the unnecessary second call on the color sensor. And we can do that by adding a variable. I'll create first a new variable. Let's say we call it intensity. And this variable will save the return from the color sensor right at the beginning of our algorithm. Okay, simply do that. And from now on, every time we want to check the intensity inside our algorithm, we'll just add the intensity variable anywhere we want to, we would have made a reading before. And that's it. Uh, now we have a color sensor being 
uh, asked to do some work only once per iteration, as would be necessary. We don't really expect the, the light intensity to change during an iteration, um, although it could, uh, you know, there would be uh, some movement going forward at all times. We don't ask the robot to stop while it's doing these readings. But still, um, just to avoid any of those uncertainties, we can, we can do a single color sensor reading per iteration using uh, a variable that we save temporarily and use that variable as the intensity in all of our uh, conditions. And now you can assume if we made a, a five-state algorithm that uh, we could reuse this uh, convention and just add two more if statements. And what kind of zones would we create for that? Well, we can think of um, different gradients to our uh, field of view. The further, out, the further out we are from the edge of the line, where we consider our center, the more sharply you want to turn in towards the line, because you're, you're, you're get, getting further and further away and starting to lose it. Um, the closer you are to the edge of the line, the more moderate you want your turns to be until in the middle you can just go straight. And so that would be how you could uh, construct your five state algorithm using again outer edges, let's say between 80 and 100 and 0 and 20 to do your sharp turns, a moderate zone between uh, say 60 and 80 and 20 and 40 to make your more moderate turns. And then the middle zone could stay the same, uh, just go straight. And you can try that on your own, and we'll come back and talk about five-state and state algorithms, and finally proportional control.